Welcome to video number four in the Fortitudo.tech Python package walkthrough. In this video, we'll be going through an example comparing mean CVAR to mean variance portfolio optimization. As always, we start at the front page of the repository and then navigate to examples. So when you look at the third example here, it's called mean CVAR and mean variance, and this is the one that we'll be going through today. This example is actually the accompanied code to an article called Variance for Intuition and CVAR for Optimization. So this article goes through the pros and cons of the two different risk measures and argues that while variance is good for building investment intuition, then CVAR should be used for portfolio optimization and portfolio management in practice. If we open this article, we can just get an overview of what it contains. So after a short introduction, then you have this section that goes through the pros and cons and introduces some important perspectives for overall portfolio risk budgeting. At the end, you can see here that basically the main con of using CVAR optimization is that it is harder to implement. So having it run in a fast and stable way, and especially with flexible entropy pooling probabilities, is a challenge compared to just using quadratic programming or second order cone programming when you do variance optimization. But in this article, in the case studies and theoretically, we show that uh, mean CVAR optimization and mean variance optimization will coincide if returns happen to be normal as in the textbook case. But in all other cases where you have something that resembles real world markets, then CVAR will give you much more meaningful results. This article also introduces optimization with risk targets and risk budget. So it is basically solving the overall portfolio risk budgeting problem that we talk about at the beginning of the article. So here you can see the formulation that solves these problems. For variance, this is quite simple. This is just second order cone programming, while for CVAR, this is um, quite challenging to do. But the important point is that this formulation is different than just optimization from a benchmark, because it introduces a trade-off between the diversification that you have from the benchmark and um, how much standalone risk you can take in, in your deviations from the benchmark. And this is actually a really, really important risk budgeting nuance uh, in practice that many people unfortunately don't think too much about. And then finally, we come to the case study, which is the one that we will be going through uh, the code for uh, in, in this example here. So basically, in this example, to eliminate uh, the sampling uncertainty, we generate a very, very high dimensional uh, Monte Carlo simulation of one million scenarios. In practice, of course, this would be an overkill. Uh, something like 10,000 scenarios should be sufficient for you to get the insights that you need even when you include entropy pooling stress testing. All right, so the first thing we do here is just to import the packages that we need. And uh, in this case, we also use PyPortfolio opt just to compare the CY implementation that we make in this package to the traditional one because uh, the traditional one uh, actually requires an introduction of um, auxiliary variables proportional to the number of scenarios. So this is one of the excuses that people they use that the prob problem quickly becomes quite large. Um, but it is actually possible to solve it in a way where you don't need uh, to have auxiliary variables proportional to the number of uh, Monte Carlo scenarios. So we just show you a computational efficiency comparison uh, in this case. Okay, so first of all, we just load some uh, means uh, and a covariance matrix. So this is basically the means and the covariance matrix that has been used to generate the log normal PNL that we have been working with before. But in this case, we want to simulate from a normal distribution. So this is why we'll load the mean and the covariance matrix. 
So here, first of all, we perform the simulation and then we just make a comparison to see how much the simulated means and covariance they deviate from the true parameters. And here you can see that since we have a million uh, scenarios, then the sampling uncertainty is quite small, but it's of course still there. So in the next code cell, we just uh, replicate table one and table two uh, from, from the article in the case study. So just showing you the means and the volatilities and then the correlation matrix. After that, we just specify some uh, long only constraints uh, and then perform portfolio optimization with efficient frontiers with three different methods. So the first one is just mean CVAR where we have uh, the mean portfolio PNL uh, as default and then we have mean CVAR where we have included the mean in the portfolio when we compute the portfolio CVAR. Finally we do normal uh, mean variance optimization. So here we have an efficient frontier spanned by nine portfolios and then we do some timing. So you can see that of course mean variance optimization uh, it doesn't depend uh, on the number of scenarios so it will run fast uh, no matter what while uh, mean CVAR optimization will depend on the number of scenarios uh, in the way that it's implemented. So you can see that there is there is some uh, difference in the computation time but um, it's still quite fast and if you work with these 10,000 scenarios or something like that then the difference will be much much smaller. Okay, after that we replicate table 3 to 5 uh, from the article. So this is where we just show uh, the efficient frontiers. So the first efficient frontier you see here, this is the one for SIVA optimization where we do not include the portfolio mean in the computation of CVAR. And then if you look at the efficient frontier here below, then you will be able to see that it's quite similar to, to the, this one above. Because this is the variance optimized uh, portfolio, so this is just giving there is some numerical uh, uh, uncertainty and some sampling uncertainty here, and uh, then these uh, efficient frontiers are practically the same. But if you look at the efficient frontier where we do SIVA optimization and include portfolio mean uh, in the portfolio return calculation, then um, you can see that the low risk portfolios are quite different than for the two other efficient frontiers. So here it's clear that SIVA optimization when you include the mean has a tendency to prefer assets with a higher expected return. And this is a bit unfortunate because what this means is that the differences in portfolio allocations are not only due to differences in the left tail properties, but also um, in the expected returns. So there is some um, blurriness for yeah, the separation between risk and return when you use uh, CVAR without demeaning uh, the portfolio PNL. So this is why we recommend that you use the demeaned version and this makes CVAR more comparable to other risk measures that are also usually deviations from the mean. Finally, uh, we go in and perform a computational efficiency comparison. Because in the first article that introduces uh, CVAR portfolio optimization, it's be it becomes a quite large a linear programming problem. And this is how people still implement it most of the time. So here we use this PyPortfolio opt implementation and just see how it runs on these million scenarios. And here you can see also that it gives you some warnings that the results can be unstable, but uh, in this case they are actually uh, okay. Uh, but what you see here is that for the normal implementation it takes 174 uh, minutes to to compute just one portfolio while for our implementation it takes around seven seconds so this is something like a speed up of 25 times uh, which is of course quite uh, quite good so here we just uh, yeah finally compare the results also as a verification to see that the fast way of solving CVAR that that we have implemented in this package 
that it also gives the, the same results as the usual implementations. Um, so here what you can see, first of all, that PyPortfolio opt, when it computes um, in Siva optimization, it seems that it includes the mean, because this is the result that we also get when we include the mean and the portfolio Siva calculations. When we look at the demand version, then we can see again that um, the portfolio for CVAR and variance, they become very, very similar. Um, yeah, besides some sampling uncertainty and some numerical uh, differences. All right, so this was uh, the walkthrough of the third example. And uh, as always, uh, if you like uh, this package, if you like these videos, then I encourage you to give the GitHub repository a star, and then I'll see you in the next video.